What's going on, guys? Kyle Carroll from MyMMANews.com and Carroll's Corner MMA Podcast. Today I'm joined by Cole Alexandri, and once again, he'll be fighting at Cage Wars 41 on April 6th. So if you're a fighter, a fan of fighting, make sure you go check it out. Cole is one of the most exciting up-and-coming rising prospects. Cole, thanks for joining me today. No problem. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Tell us a little bit about this fight you got coming up against David Hawker. Yeah, so I'm fighting uh, David Hawker. Um, moving down 10 pounds from my original weight class. Uh, it's probably where I'm going to stay. Probably around this 155 area. Um, seems like a tough kid. 3-1, and 4-1, and one, I believe. Okay. So I've only got one loss, so... I'm excited to get in there and, and, and get a you know a tough fight, push myself. Awesome. I know I talked to you, I think, two fights ago, and that's something you were looking for is to get in there against opponents that definitely will push you uh, to the limit. Um, what uh, Any challenges you expect from him going into this fight? Um, I mean, I've seen video on him, but all the video I've seen, you know, they're pretty old. Okay. But from what I can see is that he's, he's a pretty good kickboxer. And um, he likes to get into clinch a lot, throw a lot of late kicks. Okay. Doesn't doesn't really matter. I mean, I know he's tough. I'm tough, too. Mm-hmm. I'm, ready, I'm ready for the challenge, you know what I mean? So. Most definitely. And I, I love the fact that you got the American flag and the Marines flag hanging behind you. Um, yeah. You're a, a Marine. Yeah. Um, Tell us a little bit about yourself and how training's been going for you and where you've improved in your game. I'm sorry, you cut out. I, I, I was just asking if you could tell me how you've improved since your last fight and uh, how, how's things going for you in camp? Oh, so uh, things have been going pretty well. You know, I've, I've been doing pretty much the same thing as I've been doing, just trying to get better at everything. I actually started... Um, getting some uh real boxing training over at shots boxing so that's one of the new things i've been working on this training camp coming around other than that i'm just working every day just like anybody else working 40 hours a week and and getting that training in whenever i can now is boxing something you've been doing since in this is new to this camp or have you been doing that in the past couple camps as well well this is the first time i'm actually get i'm getting like actual boxing training like oh wow i've done i've done boxing i mean my first team when i first started um when i was in the marines it was a marine Mm -hmm. team and uh my coach he was a kickboxing boxing coach but this is an actual boxing gym i'm going to now and um i've I've only been there you know maybe a month and i've learned so much and my 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 game has improved just from that so well, that's one of the new things I'm doing right now. I'm excited to see that because your last two fights, before you choked the shit out of your opponent, you you clipped them pretty good and dropped them. Um, how much more confidence is this going to give you in your stand-up game? Um, I mean, I'm I'm always pretty confident, like anywhere I go. Mm-hmm. But just knowing that um, I have better technique now, and I like I know I know what I'm doing. Um, yeah, it's. It feels good, and um, I feel good sparring. I feel good training. My cardio is good. Like, everything's there. So you guys are going to see a pretty good version of me. <clears throat> nice. And this is a super light heavyweight fight, which is 165. Does it um, does it feel better that you're cutting the weight? Is that going to be an issue for you at all, or is it kind of going to be an easy cut for you? Oh, no, it's it's easy cut for me. Awesome. It's, it's, no, it's no problem at all. I feel amazing. Um, I cut my first, uh, fight. I actually fought at 155. Um, I, I don't, I didn't really know what I was doing cutting weight. I mean, it was kind of mm-hmm. tough the first time around. I still don't know. You know what I mean? I still not like an expert, at, you know, cutting weight and, and stuff like that. I don't have like a nutritionist or anything like that. I'm just going off of like, you know, my mentors and my training partners, you know, what they do. So I'm kind of just using those tips and, um, just going from there. It's not. It's not hard for me at all. It's not hard on my body. I feel amazing. Um, my cardio is there, like I said. My strength is there. I feel a little bit quicker. So okay. we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, and you fought your last couple fights at 170. You're saying you're feeling a little quicker. Um, ha- have you changed anything in camp because you're going down in weight, or has everything kind of been staying the same, adding more cardio, less cardio, or anything like that, or is it just keep consistent and continue moving forward? No, I've 
I'm always on top of my cardio. I'm always on top of everything. I try to improve anywhere I can. I'm always pushing myself and like, I know what I need to work on. And that's one thing about me. Like, I don't need, I don't need somebody to sit there and tell me, Hey, you need to do this. You need to do that. I know what I got to do. And I always push myself regardless of who's around me I'm by myself. Like that's one thing I always do. I'm always pushing myself. In your last couple of fights, I mentioned you, you clipped the guys pretty hard and then you jumped on them and eventually choked them out. Is that something in your mind instead of just ground and pounding and beating them? Is that a way of like preserving your knuckles and your fists or is that something you just want to get in there and you know, you could get the choke quicker. Hey man, <laughs> wherever the fight, wherever the fight goes, and if I see an opening, that's that's where I'm going to take it. You know what I mean? I, I'm not really specifically looking for this or that. Okay. Um, I'm just do, I'm just doing my thing in there, and then if I see an opening, I'm going to take it. So that's pretty much how I, how I look at it. <clears throat> awesome, awesome. And uh, so we got this challenge coming up against Hawker. What can you expect from him in the cage? And then uh, moving forward, what do you believe if you win and um, – in a big fashion, like a knockout or another quick submission, do you believe this gives you a title shot? Uh, well, this is a title fight. So, oh, it uh, is? Oh, geez. My bad. <laughs> no, it's all right. Um, I expect that he's going to be tough. You know what I mean? Uh, anybody, that get, anybody that gets in there is tough regardless. So um, I'm, not, I'm not looking down at him. I'm not, you know – thinking this is going to be an easy run or whatever. I don't ever think that, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I'm ready for a tough fight, and I hope he's ready for a tough fight. <clears throat> oh, my apology. I don't know how I missed that it was a title fight, but um, <laughs> it's definitely, all, it's all definitely good, well earned. That's for sure. Definitely well earned. Um, if you win, do you plan on defending? And if um, if so, like, is there a timetable to turn pro, or are you still going to continue fighting amateur to you get what you're looking for under your belt and then make that leap? <laughs> Um, so I see, so let's say I get the 160 belt. Um, we could be talking about going to 155 and challenge for, challenging for that okay. or, or defending it. It all, it all depends on the circumstances and, uh, you know, what my guys think is better for me. And, um, and in terms of like going pro or anything, this is, this will be only my fifth amateur fight and I'm not in really a rush to go pro mm-hmm. i want to get as much experience as i can that way when it's time for me to go pro you know i'm ready so i'm not in like a huge rush i i, I want to go pro at some point mm-hmm. that that's definitely the goal but i'm not in like a like a super big rush or anything i want to i want to get as much experience as i can and then you know when the time comes and everyone feels i'm ready then yeah that's what we'll do most definitely. And when you're watching other fighters at a professional level, like UFC, Bellator, or the local scene on the professional level, is there anything you like look at them and be like, you know, I could do that, um, I'm at that level, or is there something like, oh, I need to work on this, need to work on that, and picking up things from different guys? Yeah, I mean, I, I watch a lot. I watch a lot of UFC fights. I watch a lot of pro fights, Bellator, all that stuff, and I'm always just looking at little things that like maybe I could use or, or – or like seeing what like what mistakes people do and like try to go off that when I'm training. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just trying, just trying to learn and like, like, like pick fights apart while I'm watching them and seeing what openings there are and stuff like that. Awesome. How do you, how do you mentally focus when you're getting prepared for a fight? Um, does mental foc- focusness start from like the beginning of the week or is it something you, you hone in on like the night before or the night of? Um, it's something I'm always thinking about regard like soon as I soon as I hear, as soon as I get that call, that text, like, hey, you know, we got this guy, blah, 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 you're gonna fight. That's what my mind's focused on. And up until the day of the fight, that's that's what I'm thinking about and that's what I'm working for. I don't I don't get distracted. I don't let you know, I don't even I don't go hang out with nobody. I sit at home and I work and I train and that's it. That's all I do. I'm focused on it. And uh once fight day comes, you know, it's just it's 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 just like it's just like sparring. It's just like training. Mm-hmm. It's it's nothing to be worried about. It's another day at the office, pretty much. You just gotta stay calm and just get in there and and do what you know how to do. Awesome. Is there anyone that inspires you to keep getting in there and fighting? Um, or when you're what when you're training and motivating you, like you sound like a pretty focused guy and a pretty motivated <laughs> guy. 
Well, what's the catalyst to all this? I'm just I'm just the type of person that like when I want something like I like when I want to do something I'm gonna do it. Um, going back to like wrestling, like I started wrestling when I was six, fifth or sixth grade, and um, that's something I put my mind to, and I didn't stop wrestling all the way up till senior year. And then uh, MMA was always in in my head mm-hmm. to like s- something I wanted to do. But I couldn't do that because I was in the Marine Corps and I was getting deployed and this and that. And finally, when I got the time to start training, I was like, this is what I'm going to do. And um, once I got to New York and I started training, um, I hooked up with um, Chris Dissano. He's someone that he's a buddy of mine from from high school from wrestling. Like me and him actually wrestled in high school twice. Uh-huh. And um, he's the one that introduced me to, you know, Hedgel Gracie Academy and and Tommy Marcelino and all the guys I train with now, he's the one that he's the one that um helped all that happen. And seeing guys like Tommy, who's been around for so long fighting and sorry. No, <laughs> you're good. Uh seeing someone like Tommy Marcelino, you know, still wanting to to train every day after after all he's done, still wanting to train every day, still wanting to help everybody. He's like one of the biggest mentors around. Like, especially for guys like me in this area, mm-hmm. he's nonstop trying to help people. That's all he does is like, he wants to help people grow. He wants to help people learn. And those are like the motivating factors for me. <clears throat> what is it like? Uh, you're talking about uh, the fact that they're motivating you. They're, they're around all the time, but training with guys like Chris Disno, who's coming off a big victory at ring of combat. You got Tommy, who's uh, Marcelino who fought at, um, a world series of fighting on a high level. What is it when you're training with these guys that it helps? Um, I know they always say iron sharpens iron. Um, but when you're in the room training, what is it that really helps you guys improve? I don't, I don't really know. Honestly, I, we're all tough and like, we're always, we're always trying to find ways to get better. Like even Tommy, like he's not even, he's retired right now. I don't know mm-hmm. if he's going to fight again. But he's always trying to find ways to get better too, and it's just like seeing stuff like that. It's like, damn, you know, it really, it really motivates you. Do you do any coaching on the side? I know a lot of guys who fight; they do coaching in their gyms. Do you do any coaching as well in your gym? Uh, no, no. I actually, uh, I did go back to my um, high school this wrestling season, and I helped coach a little bit for that oh, awesome. team. Um, when I had the chance, I didn't really have much time to do it, but. Um, my wrestling coach, he's pretty much the one that got me start wrestling when I was in like fifth, sixth grade, and he's still the coach there now. So I helped him out a little bit with their team. And um, other than that, no, I don't do any like uh, like any coaching or anything like that. Uh, hopefully, you know, in the future when I got some more time and stuff like that. That's pretty cool though. That, like getting the help a little bit, a little bit is more than nothing. Um, but when you're doing that little bit of coaching, do you see like a um, you're, you're coaching these kids details and the finer points. You think in your mind, you know what, maybe I can work on this and this is going to help me. Does a little bit of coaching you've done, has that helped you in your training? Yeah, a little bit. Um, especially going back, going back and seeing these, uh, high school guys wrestling. It's like, like they're tough. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm sitting there watching these guys wrestle and I'm like, damn, I need to work on that too. Like I haven't done, I haven't done that in a while. Like I need to work on that. So yeah, it's definitely something that uh, helps me a little bit. <clears throat> awesome. Any sponsors or anyone you want to recognize going into this fight? Uh, no, no sponsors this fight. Um, hopefully hopefully I can get some sponsors for my next fight. Just want to shout out, um, you know, Tommy Marcelino, Chris Dissonnell, everybody at Henzo Gracie Academy, um, Shots Boxing for helping me on this camp and uh, more camps moving forward. And everybody else has been helping me. Awesome. Hey, well, I appreciate taking the time. Um, before I let you go, prediction for this fight? Um, not going to sound like cocky or anything, but I am looking for the finish. Um, I know he's I know he's tough, and um, I'm tough too, obviously, and uh, it's going to be a good fight. I'm excited to get in there and, and, and get a good challenge. And, um, yeah, we're looking for the finish. <clears throat> awesome. Well, hey, I'm looking forward to this fight as well. I had the luxury of co- commentating the fight alongside Will Barry. Uh, should be a great title fight. Um, 
I can I expect nothing but the best from you guys when you step inside the cage. You guys train like professionals and carry yourselves like professionals. So Cole, I appreciate you taking the time and hopping on here to chat. No problem. Thanks for having me. Best of luck, man. Have a good one.